Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at some small NeoVim plugins that I use in my configuration. The purpose of this video is to show you some smaller things that maybe you didn't consider putting in your configuration that I've put in mind that I find to be pretty useful. If you don't know what NeoVim is or you're not too familiar with how it works, it's essentially a highly customizable text editor where you can build up a configuration to make it more powerful in areas that you need. Um, and one of the best ways to do that is to install third-party plugins made by the community. Um, and so today I'm going to be going over some of those smaller ones that maybe you'd overlook. Now these smaller ones aren't necessarily like smaller as far as lines of code go. It's more smaller as in like you wouldn't immediately think to add this to your configuration. This, these are going to be things that are less obvious than those plugins. Now the first plugin that I have here is flash.env. Now this one did get pretty popular and it's been mentioned in quite a few videos, but I really want to you know hit home the idea that this is a very, very useful plugin to have. Um, and if you don't know what it is, it's essentially a plugin that basically gives you teleportation abilities. Um, so let's say that I want to get to this text that says remote right here, but my cursor is all the way over here on the left. How would I get there in vanilla NeoVim? Um, well, what I would do is I would probably just, you know, if, I, if I'm not trying to think too hard, I'm just going to hit slash and type in remote and then I'm at remote. If I really want to be super efficient with how I'm moving around, I would do a 2J to go onto the line and then I would do FR and then I would press semicolon, semicolon, semicolon and then I would be at remote. This is not too bad, but it can get a lot better thanks to this plugin. So if I want to get to that spot using flash.envim, I'd press ZK and then I'd press R. And what you'll see is that it will list out every R on your screen currently um, with a marker next to it, which is just a character that you can press. And the one that is next to the R that we want to go to is T. So I'm going to press T and now I'm at that location. And what this does is it not only reduces the amount of keystrokes that you have to type, which honestly isn't the big deal here, um, but it also just removes removes the cognitive load of having to get to a very specific location. Um, so while I still do use stuff like dollar sign and underscore to jump around and I use capital W and B a lot to go throughout lines, um, whenever I have like a not super obvious place that I want to be at, instead of just like holding down K and J and then holding down W and B, I'll just press ZK and then type in that spot and then I'm there. So the real benefit here in my opinion is not the speed, it's really the reduced cognitive load. Another awesome benefit of this plugin is that it supercharges your F and T commands. If you didn't know, the F and T commands are used to find characters along your line that you're currently on. And so if we just open up NeoVim with no configuration here, so this is just completely plain NeoVim, and if I press F and then press uh, R, it will just go to the first instance of R. And then if I press semicolon, it'll go to the next one, and it will do that until the end of the line, but it stops at the end of the line. In comparison, if I did the same thing here where I do F and then press R, not only do I have a little bit better UI, but I can also do this across all of the lines below my current selection. This is really useful because there are a lot of times where I do want to go to a character that's on a different line, and I don't want to have to go down to that line before I do my F or T command. The next one that I want to take a look at is fidget.envim. Now, this is one that I found pretty late into my configuration journey, and it's honestly a really underappreciated plugin. Basically, what it does is it gives you a bunch of status updates of, you know, your LSP setting up or your formatter setting up and stuff like that in the bottom right corner of your screen. Um, and this is really, really useful, especially for LSPs and formatters that take quite a long time to initialize, like Rust Analyzer, for example. Um, so it can just help you kind of give you uh, an idea of you know what's taking so long why is my autocomplete not working things like that so let's go ahead and open up a rust project to see what it looks like so it's initializing rust analyzer it's doing all of its different things whatever rust analyzer needs to do um, taking 100 years as it normally does you know no hate rust analyzer does a lot of work but um, as you can see now it loaded properly so now we should be able to hover to get documentation and go to definition and see all of my terrible code one of the ones that I've been getting a lot of comments about is this one called Vim T Pipeline. Basically, this one integrates my NeoVim status line into the TMUX status line. Um, so something that you might not have noticed is that I don't have a bottom status bar at all. Um, and this is thanks to this plugin right here, which has essentially moved my status line up to the top here. Now, commands and stuff still show up on the bottom, but the actual line itself is completely integrated up to the top and is fully responsive and stuff. And as you can see, the numbers in the middle here are actual TMUX windows, um, which are interactable. So 
that's really nice as well. Now, the reason I do this is honestly a little bit unreasonable, but if I exit out of my TMUX session and let's just go to my NeoVim configuration and open up a file, as you can see, my status line hovers like a little bit above the bottom of the terminal. And the reason is because that this gap below it is just a little bit too short to be able to display another character. Because of that and the way that terminals render, they don't want to render any partial characters at the bottom, so they just stop rendering at the last cell that is completely visible to the user. Um, so if I were to zoom out and zoom in, you can see that I can get really, really close to having this sit flush, but it basically very rarely sits perfectly flush. You have to have very specific sizes. And I'm a person that when I'm programming, I'm zooming in sometimes and I'm zooming out sometimes. It's It really depends on the day and what I'm working on and you know what mood I'm in and stuff like that. And having that gap honestly really bothers me like a lot. So having this Tmux integration here makes it so that no matter what file I'm in, you can't see this gap. Yes, the gap is technically still there, but it looks flush from my perspective here because you can't see that there is an actual cutoff between NeoVim and my terminal because the backgrounds are the same. Um, but yeah, that is the main reason that I use it. Another minor benefit is that on small displays, like whenever I'm using my laptop out in public or something, I gain an extra character of height because I have both of the status bars in the same spot. So it's also really good if you have very limited real estate in your setup. Okay, another one that I really like is Envim Colorizer. So this essentially just detects all of the different colors like hex colors and RGB colors and stuff inside of any file that I'm working on and actually colors them. It actually highlights the background with the proper color. Let's just open up some sort of CSS file here. And as you can see, all of the colors in here have the actual value, which is really, really nice whenever I'm doing front end development where I'm working with plain CSS files, unfortunately. Um, this is nice for that sort of purpose. So if you use Tmux with NeoVim, but you haven't messed around with your setup too much, you might find that the transition between Tmux and NeoVim itself is a little bit clunky. Um, the reason is because window commands in NeoVim and window commands in Tmux are different, but visually there's no difference. Like, like for example, if I split a pane in Tmux, you'll see that I now have a split pane like this, um, but there's not a ton of visual cues to tell you this is NeoVim and this is not NeoVim. And so instead of trying to address this issue by maybe making your terminal look different than NeoVim, I prefer the other approach, which is to essentially make them more integrated. And so the way that I've done this is using Vim Tmux Navigator, which essentially allows you to use the same commands to jump between NeoVim windows and Tmux windows and NeoVim and NeoVim windows and Tmux and Tmux windows. So what this means is I can just use Control H, J, K, and L and move between Tmux and NeoVim panes like this. And I can also just make another Tmux pane and now I'm moving between Tmux panes and I can make another uh, NeoVim pane and I can move between these. So it's completely seamless. It's a really, really nice uh, system to work with. So I really, really like this plugin. So this plugin is a little bit different than other ones in that you have to do a little bit of setup outside of NeoVim. Basically, you just need to add this line to your Tmux configuration file and then just install Vim Tmux Navigator and set some mappings and then you should have it all perfectly up and running. The next one that I really like is called NVIM Tree Sitter Text Objects, and this basically builds on top of Tree Sitter to give you really, really nice text object movement and manipulation based on the information that Tree Sitter has parsed from your file. So for example, inside of this TSX file, I can jump to the next function by doing bracket F, and I can just keep on doing this to jump to all the different functions. I can also do stuff like VAF to select everything around a function or uh, VIF to select everything inside of a function. So like, let's say I wanted to just completely clear out this function. I could just do uh, DIF and just completely empty the function. Now, yes, you can use things like VIP and DIP to select and delete a, an entire paragraph but as soon as you have a space inside your function, you can no longer use this effectively. Like for example, if I add a space right here and I do VIP, absolutely nothing happens. If I move up and I do VIP, then I select that part and then I select this part here. Not super great, not super consistent behavior. And what I really want is consistent behavior. I don't want to uh, say like, oh, I wanna select this function and sometimes it selects it, sometimes I have to keep going down. Um, I want one single thing that works every single time. And for me, VAF works every single time. So I use this instead. 
That is a quick speed round of some things that you probably have in your configuration, but I want to mention them just in case you don't. Tab out is really, really useful. Um, you know, if you don't know what it is, basically whenever you type a character that also has a closing character, um, it will allow you to tab out of it so you don't have to explicitly go into normal mode and then jump around it. You can just stay in insert mode and press tab. So for example, I could type parentheses here and press tab and I'm now outside of them and I can type outside of these parentheses. Another one is comment.nvim. This allows me to comment and uncomment anything. So if I press GCC, it will comment it. And if I press GCC again, it will undo it. Um, I can do that with everything inside of a selection as well with just GC. So these are this is really, really useful. This can be done completely like on your own with a few lines of Lua code. I just don't have a reason to switch it over to that. I just continue using the plugin because it works and there's no other reason to rewrite it for my own configuration if I already have it working with my current approach. So yeah, I still use comment.nvim. Here are some other really nice ones that I have, and I kind of have them all in the same file because they're so relevant to each other. Um, one of them is TreeSJ. Now TreeSJ essentially allows you to like collapse entire lists into one line or put them all on a new line. Um, so for example, inside of this here, I can press space M and it will put them all on multiple lines and press space M again. So this is really, really nice whenever you want to maybe just like quickly write out a list and then you want to just format it into a vertical list. Um, so I use it a lot for those type of things or also whenever my formatter is disagreeing with me, I will quickly flip it into a list or a flat thing and then maybe put like a, you know, formatter ignore comment above it. Um, there's a ton of uses for this. I do honestly use this quite a bit. Um, I think auto pairs is pretty self-explanatory, but it basically just closes your parentheses for you and your brackets for you and things like that. I honestly am on the fence about auto pairs. Sometimes I really like them and sometimes I really don't like them. Um, so every once in a while I will comment this out of my configuration and then every once in a while I will put it back in specifically whenever I'm using Lisp which honestly is not very often but every time I do use Lisp I turn off auto pairs because working with Lisp with auto pairs is just absolute hell for me but otherwise it is a really good plugin and then we have mini.surround which is what I use for surrounding things so for example if I wanted to surround this mini with braces I would do VE and then I'd press SAB to surround it with braces and now it's in braces but there's also some really nice features with this like I can do I can also highlight mini and I can do SAT and now I can write in some sort of like HTML tag here so I can put like a canvas and it will wrap it in a canvas tag. So that being said, that about ends today's video. That was a pretty decent amount of small plugins that we went over. Hopefully you found at least one of them useful and you add it to your setup. Um, if you enjoy this type of video, make sure to like and subscribe and also let me know in the comments that you enjoy it so I can continue making videos like this. And if you really enjoy this video, consider supporting me on Patreon so I can continue making videos like this. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day. See ya.